Good day, my student of the third year of SMIR. We will have our semester today, uh, our talking of the pastoral theology and BEC, Basic Ecclesial Christian Community. Today, I will give the orientation of the introduction, whether it is pastoral theology and uh, or basic ecclesial Christian community. So, if you know, if you are considering theological training, it is important to ask ourselves what practical training you will receive from the stu uh, from studying theology, no? And the traditional name for that area of theology is practical theology. But more commonly now, it is called pastoral theology that we are going to study uh, during this semester. And pastoral theology uh, is concerned with the theory and with the practice no? of the Christian ministry because right practice proceeds from right belief. Meaning to say, no? if you really practice what you are what you are helping in your belief and it is it is really come true no for example if you believe that the only qualification needed for ministry were appropriate spiritual gift you probably would not want to study at all because it is just only a spiritual gift no so, however, it is clear from Scripture that gifting and training belong together. You know, as happened to the Apostle during, you know, three years. Imagine that three years of teaching from Jesus. They are learning, they are teaching. And Paul, when after his conversion, once again, he spent three years out of the public eye before beginning his work as the apostle to the Gentiles. You may read from the, uh, the letter of, uh, of St. Paul to the Corinthians, no? That's why spiritual gifts are finally given, but it takes careful thought and study to know how they should be used. And pastoral theology is that study. So, the primary concern of the pastoral theology are three major areas of local church ministry. What I call, if I can write here, it is about uh, leadership. Leadership. And it is the area of pastoral theology. And it is about the second one, pastoral care. Pastoral care. And the third is uh, public ministry. Uh, public ministry. And it is this, the area of the pastoral theology. However, uh, their study is far more widely relevant, containing transferable skills. All this one needed skills, no? 
useful not only the the spread of the Christian service but also to the any career in which it is useful to develop competent leadership an understanding on how effectively to care no to care for people and to learn for the public uh, ministry like public speaking so let us start with this the first leadership as i i like very much to explain this one clearly because it is related with our uh, being leader here in the society in the church it has been mostly said that mark of true leadership is that someone is following you you are the leader because somebody or many people uh, enjoy your guidance to lead them no so they are following you in other words there is a quality of leadership that is hard to define but you know observable when it is real all the same there are skills to learn which makes to more effective leaders as leaders and the spiritual leadership also uh, involves a leaning a learning process known only usually as formation a process of being shaped as a godly and wise leader so it is a part of your formation become before you become priest or become ministry you have to have your you have to undergo your formation that's important the formation so the what i mean ultimately under god but in your period training under the guidance of experienced people in your community no so the starting point for the christian leadership is to develop biblical study develop biblical study it is biblical sorry biblical study so if you want to become a good leader in the pastoral theology you have to learn more the biblical theology biblical study or biblical theology i think you will you will get this your biblical theology that requires imploring various models of leadership in the bible as well as different uh, theories put forward to explain what we find there you no know? so as a leadership uh, as a leader in the catholic church you need really to deal with your study biblical theology you no know? it is to be a good leader because from this a uh, theology of leadership draw together the biblical evidence comprehensively in order to present a what i call coherent framework of principle for spiritual leadership today and the second for the leadership in this case is uh, what i call uh, examine is at natural phenomenon no uh, a natural phenomenon no so something which has been widely to secular academic what i call we have to go to look for the what we call popular literature no 
you have to go to literature le literature no no we need to <coughs> to study bible as a leaders to be a good leader and also to have to what i call you have to confirm with the literature like what we are doing here to study the how do you call it to study the pastoral theology i would like to prepare you to read after this the pastoral theology in classical tradition and also the council the second vatican council evangelium gaudium It is important for me. It is to put the resources to literature. We have to focus in this, in our study of uh, pastoral theology. And the third area of the leadership is uh, personal and development or formation. No, they are moral and spiritual qualities. This one, we have to undergo. The formation, formation to be a good leader, no through the formation, and usually it is the best formation uh, in in the leadership in the pastoral theology is your community, where our lives are observed over a period of time, sufficient for our peers to get. Under the skin, who are and how we relate to others. So you are under the formation of your community. Each of each one of us. So this one, the three or the good element of the leadership that you will get in during our study of pastoral theology is once again the we have to develop our biblical theology. And also going to the natural phenomenon that is going to extend uh, our literature, and also to read the book. You know what I mean, to read the book about the pastoral matter, and also to do uh, the formation through our community. And it is, I believe, with this we can move to the how do you call it to be a good leader, no, in the In the pastoral theology, and this the the second that I mentioned, Ganina, with the pastoral theology, it is in what what I call uh, pastoral care. Pastoral care, like we have to care for the sick, we have to care for the poor, and so on. The parishioners, no, it is. What is the pastoral care here? Pastoral and the pastoral theology is pastoral ministry, and the pastoral ministry arises from developing appropriate relationship with the pastor. No, however, the pastoral relationship is not simply that of a friend and well wisher. No, but it is a spiritual career. That means that we have to decide. What is the qualities? No, are a such of relationship. No, in the Catholic tradition, the emphasis is self evidently on regarding the pastoral role as primarily parental, as indicated the by the priestly title, what we call father. No, you are called as a father because it is the title of our ministry. No. I, the people calling Father Larry. It is really related with the uh, uh, premarital parental. There is biblical warrant for such a parental emphasis, but among the denomination like Protestant, pre- preference is for regarding the pastor and under shepherd of Jesus Christ. They call it pastor, you no, know, the Protestant. It is related with sep, uh, separate, no separate, no separate, no begin separate of Jesus, separate of Jesus, of Jesus, no. That is, but it is the value, the value 
the term pastor is, is in fact on the in Latin word for shepherd, no? It is pastor. And that is a rich theme in the scripture concerning the model provided for leaders in God's uh, God's car, especially the manifested his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. No, now it is really in addition to the general pastoral leader, there are special areas of pastoral which require to doubt. No, we need some understanding of strategies for such for its age and social group in the church life. No, so. The pastoral care it will uh, it will very very important. First, we have to know uh, to come to know about the the identity being pastor. That's important. The identity being pastor, no, being father, being shepherd, no. We have to come to know about this one. So that's why with this it is the legacy. That we will serve, no. Uh, we look, as uh, we look at issues as as leading people to the faith, disciplining, new convert, baptism classes, wedding preparation. It is, it is about the area of the pastoral care. And finally, there are special pastoral needs which arise from out of the ordinary pastoral situation. So we have to serve them. No? It is the first about the pastoral care. Once again, it is about the, how do you call it, strategies no? for the pastoral strategies. And the, and the second area of this pastoral care is to the church disciplinary procedure. We have to, to to follow the disciplinary procedure of the church. Disciplinary. Uh, plenary procedure. No, that's, that's it, no? For example, to prepare uh, in the, how do you call it, the sacrament matrimony, and so on and so on. So, uh, as a pastor, as a father, uh, for we need to have to be sustaining an effective and order ministry in this area of the pastoral care. We will talk about this what uh, during this uh, during the semester but about this one. And the third of the pastoral theology, leadership, and then pastoral care and then oh, the third is the past the uh, preaching and worship no? preaching and worship no? and worship uh, pastoral theology overlap sometimes with systematic theology it is a concern for ecclesiology but anyway as a practical of this, the study of pastoral theology therefore is both theological and also practical, both about principle and uh, with the people. Meaning to say, we have to preach them. We have to, how do you call it, to have a skill to preach them, to confirm the people. It is a part of the pastoral theology. So meaning to say, if I can summarize when we study pastoral theology, uh, if I can conclude for a while, the, the pastoral theology that we are going to learn is, if I can conclude this one, no? theology in such as much as it is concerned with the reflex on the passage, to preaching and catechism, a catechetic from the study of scripture and systematic theology. It is the first concern. So, uh, the catechism, the preaching, pastoral theology is about the preaching. 
and the catechetic. Uh, catechetic. Catechetic. The study of scripture and systematology. And the second, the area of pastoral theology is moral, uh, sorry, practice of liturgy and sacramental life. Practice of liturgy, liturgical and sacramental life. And the third, the pastoral theology is also concerned with the moral and spiritual counseling. Moral and spiritual counseling. And the fourth, uh, the pastoral theology involves care of people facing special problem. Care of people. With special problem like refugees, drug addict, sick, and very old, and the dying. And the fifth, the pastor theology struggles for justice and peace. Struggle for justice and uh, peace. It is the area of our study of pastoral theology. And uh, eh, sorry, the sick, the last care of people of different ages and different life situation. Care of people in different ages. and situation. So, very wide to study pastoral theology. Right? So, many are pastoral theology as anonym, uh, synonymous with practical theology or uh, critical reflection on the church's manifold mission of the world, in the world. No? Over centuries, outstanding contribution of the pastoral theology have come sa, from such like St. John Chrysostomus, Gregory the Great, and so on. And it is what, uh, what we will continue to, to, uh, to continue what is the, the pastoral theology in the classical tradition because give us the idea of what is pastoral theology is all about. And also with the Council, the Second Vatican Council, the Second Vatican Council, of the Evangelist uh, Evangelist Gadiu. So we have to read this one. No, read this one. It is about the pastoral theology, and the last it is about the BEC, and then the the how do you call it? the the next the next study. I I hope I can finish this study of pastoral theology and BEC basic ecclesial. Theology. What is the BEC actually? Basic Ecclesial Christian Community. Uh, we call it Basic Christian Communities and so on. Uh, small Christian Communities. No, Some contend that the movement has origin and inspiration from liberation theology in Latin America. However, many would regard the emergence of BEC as part of the concrete realization of the communitarian model of the church as communion as people of God no? and promoted by the Second Vatican Council. So the communities are considered as the new way of being the church. The church at the grassroots, in the neighborhood, in the villages. And it is the pastoral theology that we are going to re, uh, to study more. Uh, I can I can say that the it is here in the Philippines. Of course, we are 
uh, we are improving with the basic ecclesial Christian community. During the ill years, there existed some BEs, especially in Latin America, historically, no, were suspected of being influenced by Marxism to, to their involvement in social and political concerns and their identification with liberation theology. However, that is not completely true. The BEC were not meant to reject or supplant the existing church structure, but to make it possible for the ordinary Catholic, for lay faithful, experience the church as a community and to actively participate in the life and mission of the church. So the vision of the renewed church that Vatican, the Second Vatican Council spelled out in the consular document Lumen Gentium and Gaudium et Spes was to be realized in the BEC. So anyway, there are so many documents like Redemptoris Missio by John Paul, St. John Paul II, affirmed that the BEC are centers for Christian formation and missionary outreach. They are the sign of vitality within the church, an instrument of formation and evangelization, a solid starting point for a new society based on civilization of love. No? So, uh, we will study more and more about this one, about the BEC. Uh, the term of uh, BEC uh, from the book of Father Armando Picardal, as I have, I shown you the book, this book, it is the main resources journeying toward the new way being judged by Father Armando Picardal CSSR. This it is a very nice book to learn about the BC. And the lately about of the BC, it is the continuing pastoral complement the BC in the Philippines here with the book of uh, in the commemoration of five years uh, Monsignor Manuel Gracia Gabriel. That is uh, the recommended book that I would like to recommend to read it during this semester. So, uh, there is no need to argue about this, the call of the community, but all of them, as I can say, it is a grassroots, grassroots of the church. So, we have to be aware of this. And I will continue this for the next next uh, study, but if I can conclude this one, the commit uh, the pastor uh, the basic BEC may be paralyzed as uh, some element here the BEC community of disciples. of disciples and the second living in communion in communion it is the characteristic of BC the third Participating in mission of Christ. Participating in the mission of Christ. And the fourth, as, priest, as a priestly prophetic Prophetic and kingly people. And as the church of the poor. Of 
the poor. And it is the definition of, I would say, the element, the important element of the BEC. What is the BEC? BEC is a community of discipleship. It is very clear. No? We are disciples of Jesus. BEC, those who are have a community in the discipleship, living in the communion. And it is BEC, living in the communion. And also, to the sleeping, they are participating in mission of Christ. Participation. It's one of us, the member of the BC, participating. And as priestly, our vocation priestly, prophet, and kingly people. And as the church of the poor. So, and it is a very, very precise the BEC, uh, and then we hope that we can we can enjoy this. How do you call it? This semester with the BEC, Basic Ecclesial Christian Community, as an agent of communion, participation, and mission. I think for this time, we will end this study right now. Thank you and see you in the next class.